What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoose, you are awesome, and yes, the Paragon assets were used in a porn game. Not only that, but Studio Foul took a few shots at Epic while they were at it. The game in question is Subverse. I've talked about Subverse on the channel before, but if you don't know what it is, it's an indie game developed by Studio Foul. They are known for creating CGI pornography. While the game does include some pretty hardcore shit, it's not a simple dating sim. There are some really fun space shoot 'em up levels as well as strategic grid combat. I'll talk more about Subverse later, but let's take a look at the reason you came. The Paragon Assets. Guys, what are we doing here? I thought our boss made an epically uptight statement that he didn't want to be associated with porn. Yeah, well, can't exactly release a bunch of premium assets for free and then not expect someone to throw them into a shovelware smut game at some point. I've got a clean shot at that funny looking one over there. Should I take it? Ah, fuck him as prime! I am killed! What the suck? I swear I did more damage in my last game. I had zero clue that they had used Paragon assets in the game. So when I see Murdoch, Rev, Gideon show up, and I think Drago was in there too, then hear that dialogue, man, I was laughing my ass off. The entirety of the game maintains a pretty good, you know, tongue-in-cheek sense of humor, but hearing Gideon say, I swear I did more damage in my last game, that is just pure gold for an old Paragon refugee like me. Uh, th there are more assets that make appearances in the grid combat. You got, you got Grim, Iggy, Crunch. Probably more, but I can't remember right now seeing any anybody else. Did I say Grox? I think Grox is in there. But don't don't get your hopes up. You're not going to see Countess get loaded up in the fuck truck for a trip to Pound Town. The assets are strictly used in the grid combat. Now let's talk about the game itself. What I was hoping for from Subverse was that it would be a fun game with a bit of smut. Not a bunch of porn with some half-assed video game aspects tossed in. I'm happy to say that I got exactly what I wanted. Even more so, really. If you pulled all the sexy stuff out of Subverse, I would still play the shit out of it. They managed to include shoot 'em up levels, grid combat, a decent story, and have that all tied into and enhanced by the harem of waifus you acquire. The game is currently in an early access state, so only about a fifth of the game is currently playable, so bear that in mind if you plan to pick this one up. It's $30 on Steam, and I don't think the current amount of content you get is worth $30. However, if they add just one more chapter, I think it will be, and the $30 gets you the entire game as it releases. I'll go through the basics of the game today and round it all out with a few of the complaints that I had. Once you make it through the tutorial, you're turned loose on a galaxy with an option to explore a variety of solar systems. When you enter a solar system, you fly around to identify and interact with various planets, satellites, and asteroids with combat initiated once you interact with the planet. There are various main story and side quests to be completed, which are marked on the planet after you ID it. The combat is one of two scenarios, either a shoot 'em up or grid combat. As you progress through the story, you add some women to your crew that fight alongside you and provide different combat benefits. They also come with uh, other benefits, if you know what I mean. Using a waifu levels her up, which improves her skills and allows you to unlock the sexy time stuff. You can enter your ship and use the various rooms to locate quests, upgrade your fighter ship for, for the shoot 'em ups, or you can upgrade and create these monsters that help you in the grid combat, uh, you can access your women, and a few other options uh, that they ju just haven't added in yet, like they're there as placeholders, but they're not there, like this locker is supposedly for costume changes, but there's nothing there. The shoot 'em up levels are really fun. You fly around an asteroid field fighting off waves of enemy ships. There are different factions that you fight against, so you aren't just fighting the same enemies every time you enter one of these levels. Your ship has both shields and health, with the shield recharging over time. You have a generic unlimited ammo laser as your main weapon, and access to boosts which allow you to blast through smaller ships. They also have a secondary weapon, which, um, that secondary weapon is missiles if you're by yourself. But the secondary weapon changes depending on which waifu you choose to accompany you. If you choose Lily, you get a long-range laser that pierces through enemies, while choosing Collision gives you our Collision, I don't know how to say her name, Collision, gives you a shotgun blast. 
I personally prefer using collision for the shoot 'em ups as that shotgun is really nice for taking out projectiles and smaller enemies. Grid combat is always led by one of your waifus and you can also choose three monsters to accompany you. Lily can heal the monsters while providing hard hitting ranged attacks. Collision is more of a brawler with some good area of effect potential. I prefer using Lily for these missions for the heal and some of the enemies blow up when they die so it's nice to be able to take them out from range. When you take damage in this mode you build up an ultimate ability that will usually kill some shit. There is quite a bit of story in the game. They do a large amount of world building and character development. The story very much reminds me of Firefly. I won't spoil anything, but if you do pick this game up and you also enjoy Firefly, then uh, I think you'll probably know what I mean. So let's talk about my complaints for the game. As I said, there's a lot of story here and sometimes the cutscenes and exposition dumps go on forever. It's interesting, sure, but there were certainly times where I was like, if I'm not fighting or fucking in the next five minutes, I'm going to turn this shit off. The sense of humor is refreshing and really did make me laugh quite a few times, but goddamn, you can only take so many dick jokes in one sitting. I enjoy crude humor just as much as the next guy, but it gets a bit old, especially when you see that the writers for this game are capable of just so much more. I would also like to see your friskier interactions with the waifus having more effect on their combat performance. For now, the combat unlocks sexy time, but sexy time doesn't improve combat. That would be a cool mechanic to have. All in all, I'm very impressed with this game. I will admit that my expectations were kind of low. I was hoping for the best and expecting the worst, and in a rare plot twist, it lived up to and exceeded my hopes. I find myself checking every day to see if they've added a new chapter yet because I'm genuinely interested in the story and feeding for more of the combat. If you enjoyed the video, please do me a favor and hit that like button, subscribe if you want, but for now, this is the Mangu signing off. You guys, have a good one. Mangu!